Vim Tips! Tips about Vim! Welcome back to Vim Tips, YouTube's most cherished Vim-based show. In fact, YouTube- Telegram from Susan Wojcicki. Well, Susan Wojcicki? That's the CEO of YouTube, isn't it? Dearest Ben, I needed to tell you that your Vim Tips show is the greatest thing to ever have graced our platform. It is without a doubt the best Vim-based show. So it only seems right of me to send you this. The key to the YouTube platform. Thank you, Susan. Vim Tips is for the beginner and intermediate Vim user alike. It's hopefully a quick and entertaining way to highlight some of Vim's insanely massive and often lesser known functionality. In this video, I want to talk about the variety of ways that you can open a file in Vim and have different effects trigger depending on how you opened it. Effects that are incredibly useful and will get you efficiently speeding into your Vim flow, such as opening a file to a specific line or regex pattern, opening Vim and immediately triggering a Vim command, and we'll also cover Vim's lesser known modes of operation. So let's dive in. Hi folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. As usual, if you enjoy what I do here, consider hitting that subscribe button. And of course, if you like that video, don't forget to give that thumbs up icon a little tickle. Also, don't forget that Vim Tips is a series of videos, so check out the other ones here. As I said, this video is all about opening and starting up Vim. And I don't just mean normally opening the Vim program. There are a bunch of brilliant and lesser known ways of starting Vim that provide you with different side effects, like immediately having your cursor in the exact place that you want to start editing, or perhaps using Vim's diff mode to easily compare and contrast two similar files. So in this video, I just want to go through a short collection of nifty methods for you to open Vim in order to enhance your overall Vimming. As always, I'll put timestamps in the description down below so you can skip ahead to specific sections. So a nice easy one to start with, if I have this file full of just lorem and I want to start with my cursor on line seven, here you can see in the sidebar line seven, starting with podcasting. What I can actually do is start Vim and tell it which line number to jump to. And I do that simply with Vim plus the line number that I'm interested in. So in this case, line seven and the file that I want to open. And watch what happens. If I say Vim plus line number, file, open it up and you can see immediately I'm on that, that podcasting line um, that I wanted to jump to. Nice. So you can use the plus to jump to specific line numbers, but of course that requires that you know the line number in question. Another option that is arguably more useful is instead of jumping to a specific line number, jumping to the first occurrence of a specific regex pattern. And that also couldn't be simpler. Again, we're gonna use the Vim command to trigger Vim. We're gonna use the plus, but instead of providing a line number, we're gonna provide a forward slash and then the regex pattern that we want to look for and jump our cursor to. I wanna look for that podcasting again. So I'm gonna do the uh, upward pointing chevron to say the start of the line in regex speak, capital P and O and D. So pod at the start of the line. Of course, I'm then gonna provide the file that I want to open. And what Vim will try and do is find this regex pattern and jump my cursor to it. I'll hit enter and immediately again, you can see that I'm on that line seven where it says podcasting. This next one is incredibly useful, especially if you've ever been in the situation where you have two versions of the same file and you wanna actually figure out what's different, what changed, and you want to use Vim to do that. Vim actually has a diff mode of operation. So the ability to compare and contrast two files. And the way that we trigger that when we open Vim is by using the tack D flag. So this is saying, hey, open up in diff mode. 
And then of course we need to provide it two files. I'm gonna provide it lorem one and lorem two and watch what happens. It opens in a split, so a vertical split. So we have one buffer on the left, one buffer on the right. And you can see on the left is lorem one, on the right is lorem two. And you can see visually with colors as well, what the difference is. So at the top, it's actually um, con like collapsed a bunch of lines that are similar. So you can see here, if I use um, spacebar to toggle um, the collapsedness of it, there's 11 lines that are the same, so it doesn't even bother showing them. What it is bothering showing is this single additional line, this in green. So it's saying in lorem one, hey, this line in green, this is added. This is something that's different than this file over here on the right. And you can see on the right, it's got these like red lines saying, ah, yeah, there's actually something missing from this file that is over there in lorem one. But what about if you're already in a file and you want to compare it with a file? You're probably thinking that you have to close down Vim and reopen Vim with the tack D and the two file names. You don't need to do that. Let me show you this. I'm in lorem1 right now, and of course I want to compare and contrast it to lorem2. To do this, I will open a vertical split. So VS for vertical split, and that'll split my screen in half and stick the other file that I tell it in the bottom here, which in this case is lorem2, in the other side of the screen. So vertical split, and now I've got the two files next to each other, but diff mode hasn't triggered. What we can do is on this buffer, type in diff this. Diff this is a vim command and hit enter, but nothing's happened because we also need to go to the other buffer and do the same, diff this. And you'll see it immediately like triggers back into that vim diff mode, but that required us to go to each buffer and type in diff this. There's a way around that where you can type diff this just once. Again, I have the vertical split, lorem one on the left, lorem two on the right. And instead I'll use the windu command and diff this. And what this basically says is do this thing, in this case it's diff this, do this diff this to every buffer in the window. And I'll hit enter and you can see, I didn't need to switch to one buffer and type this, this. And I didn't need to switch to the other buffer and type diff this, I could just do it in one command. Finally, if for some reason you wanted to disable the vim diffing, but keep all the files and splits open, you can use the vim command diff off to disable the diffing. And if I just hit enter here, you can see I've still got both buffers open with the split and it's just the diff mode has stopped diffing. The next one is probably going to get me crucified by the vim community, but did you know that vim had an easy mode? So for anyone that struggles using Vim and normal mode, insert mode and switching between them and all the mappings, Vim has an easy mode to sort of ignore all of that and essentially act like the nano editor. And to open Vim in easy mode, you simply do Vim, tack Y and the file that you are interested in opening in easy mode. And watch what happens. If I open it up and start J'ing and K'ing and L'ing around to move my cursor, I, it's not letting me do that. I'm immediately thrust into insert mode and I'll even hit and smash escape to try and go back to normal mode, but no, it's keeping me in insert mode. And essentially it's removed a bunch of capability. It just keeps you in insert mode. My arrow keys are now my sort of movement keys and I can type um, and uh, sort of act as though this is the, the, the nano editor or a sort of uh, stripped down simpler editor, I suppose. And just to say, this is not me recommending Vim's easy mode at all. No, 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 no. Trust me, you are far better learning Vim. But if you need quick access to a nano-like editor um, and you want to use Vim, then easy mode exists. However, those of you that are on the ball, you will have thought of something. If I can't use the escape key in easy mode, I can't close Vim. I can't colon Q or colon WQ to quit out of Vim and that's a problem. And the way around it is by using the key binding control and O. And what control and O does in normal Vim as well is whilst you are in, in insert mode, you can use control and O to quickly do a Vim command and then crack on with insert mode. So I've hit control and O already and now I will colon Q and bang to say quit without saving and I managed to escape Vim's easy mode. The next one I wanna show you is incredibly useful and I use this all, all the time. And this is starting Vim and immediately triggering a Vim command. Now I'm not talking about auto commands, which uh, you should look into if you're interested. When you start Vim with different configurations or file types, you can have auto commands in your VimRC to do certain things. What I'm saying is, triggering Vim from the command line and passing in a Vim command here 
that immediately triggers when Vim is open. Let me show you how to do that. And there's actually two ways of doing it. Uh, you can do Vim with tax C for command, which is a really nice sort of clean way of doing it. And then you can provide some Vim commands to, to this uh, command to trigger when Vim opens. So I might want to do um, normal mode, um, capital G to go jump to the bottom of the file and ZZ to center that in the screen. So this is really useful if I wanted to like open a file and immediately be at the bottom and centralize the screen so I know where I'm looking. Um, and I'll pass it in a file. I've got lorem long for that exact example. So if I hit that, you can see where my cursor is. It's immediately the bottom and my cursor, my line is in the center of the screen. So we did a Vim command from the terminal as Vim was opening. The other option, and it's totally up to your preference which one you pick, is by using that plus again. The plus symbol that let us jump to line numbers and regex patterns also can be used to provide Vim commands. And I like to put them in quotes in case I use spaces, which you probably will. Um, but again, I'll just do the same command. I'll just do normal, capital G for the bottom of the file, ZZ to center it up, and of course, pass it the lorem long file and hit enter. And you can see, again, it's done the exact same thing that the tax C version did. And of course, now equipped with that knowledge, you are only limited by the Vim commands and Vim key mappings and things that you know. You can create all sorts of crazy combinations of mappings and commands that trigger when you open Vim. Let me just give you one more example to hopefully inspire you and help you think of your own. Uh, Vim with the plus version, um, colon to say, I'm gonna write a command, dot bang to say, trigger a um, shell command, but bring the results back into Vim. So we can start, we can, you know, just knowing that we can use all sorts of crazy programs um, from our machine and just bring the results into Vim. In this case, I'm gonna use one of my favorite programs called Figlet, which creates like basically bubble text from text that you uh, supply it with. And I'm gonna supply it with the word test. So when I open Vim, we should see on the inside the buffer already populated a big word that says test. So if I hit that, you can see bang, the bubble text of test is there. And finally, I have saved my very, very favorites till last. This is a command that I use every single day without failure. So hopefully you know that you can use Vim to open a file. So Vim lorem one will open lorem one. But what happens if I want to take the output of some other command in the terminal and open that in Vim? I could trigger the command and save the output to a file and then use Vim to open that file, but that's rubbish and I'm lazy and there's a better, better way. Let's use the echo command just as a really bad example. If I want to echo test, this is a test. Okay, so that is a command that just writes back to the screen, but I want to take that and let's imagine it's some other long command that triggers lots of different things to happen. I wanna take that output and open it directly in Vim without having to save it to like an intermediary file you can do exactly that. And for those of you that are on the ball, you're thinking maybe pipes is something that might work here, and you're exactly right. You can pipe the output, so using one of those bars to say, take the output of this command and pass it to this next command for as its input, and you can use Vim. However, you can't just pass it into Vim like that. Look what happens, it says, ugh, input is not from the terminal, and it has a little hissy fit, and it fails, and it closes, right? You have to supply one final character to make this work space hyphen okay hyphen tells vim ah you're not reading a file you are reading from standard input so basically you're saying oh yeah 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 you're not reading a file you're not reading the contents of a file you're reading whatever's coming from the left side of this of this pipe here so if we hit that now you'll see that the file that sorry vim has opened with the output of that command that just triggered and in this case it's echo but it could be any any command in the terminal, you can take the output and pipe it into Vim by using the awesome power of a pipe and then Vim with the hyphen to say read from standard input as opposed to a file. Incredibly useful. I use it every single day. And that is actually it. If this video has inspired you to go away and learn more about different ways of opening Vim with triggering all sorts of crazy different effects, then I'll put some descriptions in the link down below for you to read more about it. Hopefully though, this video at least highlighted to you some awesome and incredibly powerful ways of opening Vim to increase and enhance 
your vimming. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Of course, if you liked it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course, ding that bell icon if you want to be notified about when I release new videos. If you have any questions about Vim or this video or any of the other Vim Tips videos, or if you have a suggestion for a video that you'd like to see me do in the future, please reach out to me at my Twitter handle, at Ben underscore Cadell. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay. Vim! Okay, ready? And second for safety. And, and, and we'll even look at using Vim's. But that required us to go to each buffer. E Ugh, easy mode is gross. There we go. Okay, cool. Normal. Um, um, and that. <coughs> then I'll put some descriptions. That was grim. That was super grim. And we out. Bye.